Hey, hey! Welcome back to Minecraft Hardcore. Look who's come to pay us a visit, my friends. Not that we can buy anything, of course, but check this out. He's actually selling a Nautilus shell, which I'm pretty sad about because ordinarily I would jump at the chance to purchase these bad boys. But, ah, uh, well, it is what it is, folks. Now, before doing anything in today's episode, I just want to start off by saying an enormous thank you for all of the support on episode one. We actually reached over a thousand likes on that video, which is is by far the best performing video we've had on this channel in a long time. So my friends, thank you so much. I really appreciate the support. I also want to give a special shout out to Toasted Toad, who actually donated $5 in the first episode. Thank you so much, Toad. I really appreciate that support. It goes a long, long way, buddy. And yeah, that is just about the only thing I've done since the last episode. I got myself the resources necessary to create myself two writable books. And, well, yeah, as you can see, got a few bits and bobs left over as well. So we're looking pretty darn good. But that does lead me on to what we're going to be doing in today's episode. And that is making ourselves a book factory. That is right. I'm talking about a sugarcane farm and a cow farm. Only the sooner we get that done, the sooner we can start getting ourselves a supply of books for some bookshelves. And thus, we can get ourselves a level 30 standard enchant setup. So the first thing we need to do is we need to grab our ourselves some wheat. We've got ourselves a few seeds in here. I believe I've got myself some bones right here. And here's the thing, when you've got bone meal handy, you don't even need to worry about having water nearby. So yeah, that's literally all we need. Where are we going to have the cows, eh? I'm thinking what we could potentially do is dig ourselves out a little bit of a cow pen in this little hill here. Yeah, I quite like the idea of that. So let's go ahead and make ourselves a bit of a start here. And while we do, I just want to remind you folks that if you are still enjoying the series and you want to continue seeing more, then do be sure to drop a like beneath the video to show your support. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, of course, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future Minecraft content. And if you do want to go one further with your support, use code Python when ordering any of my Apex gaming PCs for 5% off. So yeah, we're going very, very simple with of this build today, my friends. So how's about we get this thing dug out and then we'll begin making it look nice. And then we'll see about connecting the two places together. My episode one hut and my little cow farm. Oh yeah, there is one other thing I've done since the last episode. I've done a little bit of landscaping. You may remember there being a little bit of a mini cave entrance kind of deal here. I've actually gone ahead and blocked that off with a layer of dirt, which has, of course, grassed over, and it looks great. And as a result of dirting this over, we are now free to build on it as we please. So yeah, kind of future-proofing this area, you could say. There we are, a nicely dug out area and it's been dirtied over. Now what we're going to do is introduce a little bit of nature to the area, maybe a hay bale or two, maybe even a cauldron so the cows have got some water to sip on, even though they don't actually sip on water in this game, but let's just imagine they do, eh? Do you know what? I've just realised something. A lot of you folks in the first episode were pointing out the fact that there was actually a village in the distance when the parrot wound up accidentally uh, not living anymore. So maybe what we need to do is retrace our steps, see if we can't find the village and see if there's going to be a whole bunch of crops there. Only if so, it's going to make this whole process quite a lot less expensive. And hey, who knows? Maybe there's some hay bales at the village as well. And maybe some cows, of course. That would be very useful. I just realized something. The parrot that wound up accidentally not living in the last episode. We could kind of kill two birds with one stone. That's not the right phrase to use now, is it? Considering what happened. <laughs> it gives us an excuse to get back up that mountain and pick up a whole bunch more iron. Only, I'd like to make myself an anvil in this episode. And maybe, you know, get the cauldron I was talking about to feed the cows with water. Ah, talking of cows, there's one up on the mountain there. Hey! Ooh, copper. The reason I'm pointing this out is because it directly relates to today's comment of the day. Gast Rider says, you'll really need a lightning rod if you don't want your base going down in a blaze of glory. 
Yes, you're quite right. I always forget about the existence of lightning rods and, well, pretty much everything copper related, actually. So maybe we need to do a little something something about that, eh, friends? We've got 15 raw copper. That would do quite nicely, actually. I think it's only three bits we need for a lightning rod. Oh my god, emeralds! Yeah, wait a minute. Maybe I shouldn't have picked that up. Maybe I save the emerald ore for when we get ourselves a Fortune 3 pickaxe, eh? Although, to be honest, the same could be said of the iron. But, I mean, iron's pretty abundant, right? So, I don't really feel too bad about picking the stuff up right now. I mean, at the end of the day, I want a cauldron. I want an anvil. Ah! And there it is! The village you guys want about! Hey! Wow, you guys really are eagle-eyed, aren't you? I didn't spot this in the last episode. Okay, very good. We'll go over there in just a minute for now. I just want to grab myself some more iron. All right, very good. 31 is the magic number to make yourself an anvil with. We then need a further seven to get ourselves a cauldron. Yeah, I'm prioritizing a cauldron above making pistons for, say, a fully automatic farm. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> Most people would probably go for the fully automatic farms. I play the game quite a bit slower than most folks on YouTube nowadays, my friends. So I do hope that that is something you folks will enjoy. What I like to do with my Minecraft videos is I like to make them as relatable to the general Minecraft population as much as I can. So yeah, you're not going to be catching me making like entire fortresses in one episode or ginormous farms in one episode. It's just not my way of doing things, so I really do hope that's okay with you folks. I go for a very much more slower, more relaxed pace here. Because at the end of the day, playing games should be fun, right? It shouldn't be about, you know, oh hey, I need to make this amount of progress in this episode, or whatever, and so on and so forth, you know? So yeah, nothing but chill vibes from your boy here. I say nothing but chill vibes, but here we are, rolling through the night time with no bed on us. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that was a mistake, wasn't it? The thing is, I've actually got the resources to make a bed back at base. Why did I not do that? How much of a doofus am I? Although, we could probably pick up a bed from the village we're about to visit, right? Yeah. Just gotta hope that we actually get to the village. All right, so we got ourselves hay bales here. Fantastic. We've even got melons. Wow, that's pretty boss. I'm looking for these bad boys, though. Our food worries are now a thing of the past. I'm sorry, buddy, but your time on this bed is also going to be a thing of the past. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. It's my bed now. I like how he just left the place and slammed the door in my face. Yeah. Okay, that's how it's gonna be, is it? I mean, to be fair, I'd be pretty miffed if someone just rolled up and took my bed. So yeah, fair play to them, I guess. Now, how about a nice variety of crops? Could we maybe get a carrot or something? A carrot, a potato, all that kind of good stuff. Any of these pumpkin seeds? I don't think they are. I think they're all melon seeds. Uh-huh. All right, let's take this bed, shall we? Beautiful. Let's see what's inside this chest here. Short grass. Tall grass and acacia saplings. Wait, aren't these tall grass items really rare? Uh, I mean, I'm going to take them for that very reason. Short grass, on the other hand, you can get that just from shearing these bad boys. So we don't have to worry too much about having that. We're definitely going to have to make some sort of rare items museum at some point, eh, my friends? It just seems a nice thing to do. We've got to have somewhere to show off all of our rare stuff for bragging rights. Oh, Talking of bragging rights, food, endless food. Let's quickly raid the remainder of these houses. Some more short grass, some emeralds. That's pretty cool. In fact, you know what? I'll take the chest as well. I don't care too much about the short grass, but I do care about the chest because all storage is good storage, my friends. All right, let's roll on in here. Ooh, a stonemason hut. 
Yo, I'm kind of down to have all of this stuff, to be honest with you. I'm sorry, buddy, but you are indeed about to get fired. I like stone cutters, so I'm having it. Another chest, another bunch of emeralds. Very good. Got a map hut over here with two maps. Hey, very good. I would very much like to have those. Oh, look at his loot, though. Beautiful. Are any of these potatoes or carrots? It doesn't look like it, does it? All right, very good. Check it out, my friends. A full stack of hay bales. I think we're looking pretty good for food now, folks. So with that village ransacked, we're going to head back to base. And we're going to hopefully lure some cows back on the way as well. So yeah, let's get over this mountain and let's get this thing done. Oh, this dude is still here. Yeah, I could finally purchase a Nautilus shell. Only one of them, though. And look at that. That was the first trade we've done in the series. Right, what else do we want? I mean, moss blocks, that'd be kind of cool, but we can get them from a lush cave pretty easily. Gunpowder, kill creepers, dyes. Oh, I don't know. Do you know what, Sonic? Let's go for a couple of those and a couple of these. I mean, gunpowder is always a useful thing to have, right? Firework rockets, you know. All right, couple cows. Let's get you off the mountains and into a nice little pen. Oh, goodness me. Please don't let there be any drowned who are about to attack me. Come on, cows. Swim. Don't you go thinking you're free for long there, chicken. I'm going to make a farm out of you too. Enjoy your freedom while it lasts. <laughs> I mean, no, nothing evil is going to happen. All right, so here's my plan. I'm going to go ahead and add these in temporarily just to get these guys in right and then we'll breed these cows up and what i'm going to do now is actually replace the gate with a regular fence and then we'll put some carpet on top because that way i'll be able to easily get in and out of this place yeah but the cows won't so we don't have to faff around with no fence gates and risk the cows getting out you know so there we go our cow empire has begun all the while i've had a bunch of iron on the go absolutely fantastic uh why can i not make a cauldron why is it not already in the crafting station there or crafting book whatever you want to call it boom there we are that's what i'm looking for then it's going to be three blocks of iron there's the anvil i was wanting and would you look at that we've got 28 iron left over oh i see that's how it is is it you're just gonna spy in my home well i didn't consider that when i was making these little sky dome window things i didn't think these guys would just be peering in Ugh, oh, dear. All right, check it out. This is actually a different one. It's got a whole bunch of different stuff. So we've got blue orchids. We've got buckets of tropical fish. Oh, that would have been nice to have, to be fair. But uh, I don't have the cash. All right, so how's about we chuck in a little cauldron for you guys to sip water out of? Also, I'm realizing the only way I can actually get over this fence is by crouching. But, eh. I don't think that's really too much of a hassle. All right, let's whip out a bucket here. Grab ourselves a little tidbit of water. And there we go. A nice little water trough for you. Wow, the little baby cow's going right for it. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Hey, guys, how about this for an idea? Little utility shelves. So on top of these trap doors, I'm going to put little utility things. In this case, we'll have a stone cutter. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool. I can still walk underneath it as well. Yeah. Just means we're not taking up floor space with our utilities, you know? We've just got to make sure... Oh, it doesn't matter. Haha, <laughs> brilliant. I was fearing that if I opened this thing up accidentally, the anvil would fall on my head and probably kill me. But... Yeah, thankfully not. Although, do you know what? I kind of think that what we should have done is actually put this all a block higher up. I feel like it's kind of limited our headroom a little bit, you know? Yeah, that looks way better a block further up. All right, very good. So I've also added in a chest here, and this is going to contain all of the food items that we can actually, like, eat straight away. So it could be considered... I don't know, an emergency food supply if we get strapped for food, which I very much doubt is going to happen at this point. But yeah, <laughs> always good to have a little backup supply. All right, just adding a few more bits of wildlife in here. Maybe we can have ourselves 
some vines. In fact, you know what? I think maybe some leaves drooping from the roof. That could be quite a nice way to go about things as well. So there we go. A quaint little cow pen. But in order to make this into a book factory, we need to add in a rudimentary sugarcane farm as well. So how about we grab out the sugarcane that I've got stored in my chest. I think it's in here, actually. There we are. 11 bits. And yeah, we can get this thing underway. After making ourselves some new tools, that is. Only we're a bit low. All right. So I'm beginning on digging out a bit of a room for the sugar cane. We're going to have ourselves a water source right in the center here. Then we're going to have ourselves a couple of small rows of sugar cane and then perhaps another water source sort of either side of the center as well. So there's still going to be plenty of spaces to grow sugarcane in here. Oh, that I think is the outside world. Aha, uh -huh. I didn't factor that into my plans now, did I? <laughs> Whoops. Eh, no worries. I think I can work around this. I don't think it's too much of a hassle. Yeah. All right, so here we go, my friends. We've got ourselves a little something something that's looking pretty decent, I would say. All we need to do is get ourselves some water in here. We can plant down the sugarcane and then we could potentially decorate this room. Although we will be a little bit limited because a lot of the space is going to be taken up by the sugarcane growing. But... We'll see what we can do. I think I can do a little something something to this at the very least. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm also going to add in a little sort of mini pathway going through the cow empire over to the sugarcane part. So then we know, oh, hey, there's actually more to this place than meets the eye. There we are. Water added. Very good. So what we can do now is start adding in the sugarcane. Hey, all right, very good. So what we can do now is decorate. So here's what I'm thinking. I think we can get away with spreading a few leaves in here and there. We just need to make sure we don't accidentally, you know, block the growing spaces for the sugar cane. All right, I think that's looking pretty all right. Uh, I think we can get away with maybe a couple vines here and there. Not many, though. Maybe I could add some sort of up here as well. I just hope that the vines don't interrupt how tall the sugarcane can grow. Like, I hope that the sugarcane can continue to grow and it will simply replace the vines if they wind up being in the way. I guess that's something we'll find out, eh, my friends? But there we go. Nice, quaint book factory. A little cow pen farm breedery area for them to hang out and a little sugarcane farm. So then, the task now is for us to connect this place up with our episode one base here. So, I think I think what we need to start off by doing though is maybe doing a tiny bit of landscaping. We're just going to flatten this land out a little bit and then we're going to carve a little footpath into it. So we're not doing anything too out there in terms of the pathway. We need only get this to meander around and sort of connect up with the book factory there. So even something like this would do the job. What I'm thinking we do now though is maybe beef up the pathway a little bit. Add a little bit of thickness to it. I think that would make it look quite nice. There we have it. And what we could then do is maybe add a few bushes around. Maybe even grow a couple trees or something. You know, maybe restore the wildlife a little bit around here. And in terms of lighting, and yeah, I know we don't have a great deal of iron to start off with, but I'm still going to do this because I think it will look quite nice. We're just going to have ourselves some nice basic lamp posts. Nothing too out there. Just enough to ensure that no hostile mobs spawn around here. So we'll have one right there, and I'm thinking, I don't know, one final one just there. There we have it. And here's the thing, we could go further even still, my friends. If we really wanted to, we could maybe grow ourselves some azalea trees. Have I ever done that before? I don't know. <laughs> We could even add in some texture variation in the form of these moss blocks here. Look at the two shades of green right there. They're very, very similar, but not exactly the same. So I think that would add a nice little something, something around here. And to enhance the texture variation even more, we could probably mix in some coarse dirt. If I could just find myself some gravel. Hey, there's some right there. Then yeah, we'll be able to make ourselves 
some coarse dirt. All right, the coarse dirt has been spread along. And now the final thing I want to do is get some trees planted. And that will just about do it. So what do we think? Do we start off with an azalea tree, let's say here? Will this even grow? Oh, look at that. It does. <laughs> oh, I don't know about you folks, but I love azalea trees. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Uh, right, let's add ourselves another one right there. Yeah! See, I didn't want to block the view of the entrance to the book factory. So that's why I put it way over there, sort of a little bit further away from the path. Uh, maybe what we could do is add another one, let's say here. Ooh, that one's gone sort of out that way a little bit. And then one final one, I'm going to say right here. Yeah! <laughs> what a quaint little area we've got going on here. I don't know about you guys, but I'm actually starting to fall in love with this area. Now then, to finish up, we're just gonna get these little bits of copper smelting, and then we're going to place a couple of lightning rods down, sort of away from our base area. Although, to be honest, I don't actually know what kind of range the lightning rods have. I don't know how much of an area they cover. Give me a second, I'll have a quick look on the wiki, only I want to make sure I get this right and not risk my base going up in flames. All right, there it is, the lightning rod. Nice and cheap to make, and it will stop your flammable bases going up in flames. Now, according to the Minecraft wiki, the range of the lightning rod, in other words, how far away from the lightning rod the lightning rod will attract lightning, it is 128 blocks in a sort of sphere formation around the lightning rod, right? So in other in other words, if I was to put the lightning rod, let's say, here, 128 blocks away in all directions and in all axes, the lightning in it will only hit this. It will not hit around this area. So 128 blocks from here, let's say over this direction, it's quite far actually, so we shouldn't have to worry anymore about lightning hitting our base, which is lovely. I love knowing that this isn't going to get blown up in flames by lightning. <laughs> that would have been a pretty nasty way to go, folks. But yeah, goes without saying, as nice as it is functionally to have there, it doesn't look very good just by itself. So I think at some point we need to make ourselves a little bit of a tower build, maybe a church or something. Something with a spire, you know? So we could put the lightning rod on top of it and then all the lightning in the area will only hit that. But my friends, that is going to be a task for a future episode. For today's episode, I think we've done pretty well. We've got our little mini book factory on the go. Sugarcane is growing. The cows are growing. We'll be able to breed them periodically and get ourselves a bunch of leather. We've got ourselves a nice little pathway here with some quaint little trees and greenery around. And I don't know about you, but I am starting to love this area. So, my friends, that is indeed going to wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode and you've enjoyed today's builds and whatnot, then do be sure to head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like. I'd really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for all of your wonderful support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.